Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather in this Eucharistic celebration to listen to God's Word and allow God's Word to be alive in us today. And so, to prepare ourselves to receive the Word of God, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
such confidence we have through Christ toward God. Not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not of letter but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, was so glorious that the children of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of its glory that was going to fade, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit be glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation was glorious, the ministry of righteousness will abound much more in glory. Indeed, what was endowed with glory has come to have no glory in this respect because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was going to fade was glorious, how much more will what endures be glorious? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Holy is the Lord our God. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. Holy is the Lord our God. From the pillar of cloud he spoke to them. They heard his decrees and the law he gave them. Holy is the Lord our God. O Lord our God, you answered them. A forgiving God, you were to them, though requiting their misdeeds. Holy is the Lord our God. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I thank all of you for being present here in the Mass, but most importantly, because you are present in the beginning and the first part of the Mass, where we read the Word of God. Because most of the time, 
people take the first part for granted and just say, pwede pa naman akong umabol sa communion. <laughs> so, sometimes that is the thinking. Uh, basta umabot ako sa Eucharistic prayer, okay pa, makapag-communion pa ako. No? But we are missing a big part of the Mass when we are late for the first part. And that is the reading of God's Word. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, the readings remind us that the Word of God is not just the letter, but the Spirit. And therefore, when we look at the Word of God, not just as letters, then we will see that the Word of God is alive. It is not dead. The Word of God is alive. That is why in our first reading, St. Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, reminds us that the Word of God is not just about the letter. If we see the Word of God just as letters, then we will see it as a book to be read. It is dead. It is just a book. But St. Paul reminds us, no, the Word of God are not just letters. They are God's Spirit. And whenever you read the Word of God, you read the Word of God that is alive. It is happening. And this is what Jesus is explaining to His disciples. The law, the prophets, the Word of God written in Scriptures will not pass away, but it will be fulfilled. It will take place. It will happen. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today, let us be reminded to treat the Word of God not just as a book with dead letters, but as God's Word, truly alive and truly fulfilling and taking place in our lives. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I have a question for reflection for you today. And please try to answer this today. How is the Word of God alive in you? How can the Word of God be alive in me today or in the story of my life? Let me just share my answer to that uh, point of reflection. We grew up in our home with my mom as a catechist in the parish. And so my mom would, nausap po dati yung cross-stitch, baka naaalala nyo pa dati sa mga, <laughs> sa mga kababaihan, sa mga nanay, no? na nauso yung cross-stitch dati. No? And my mom got this into the craze of this cross-stitch. But he would not stitch pictures or drawings she would stitch the Word of God. <laughs> and so, the whole house was filled with the Word of God. And my father was laughing at her. No? Sabi niya, ginawa mong simbakan ang bahay natin. No? Because anywhere you will see the Word of God. But until now, you know, kaming magkakapatid, we still memorize the Word of God written on our house. No? Pag minsan nakikita-kita kami, nagkikwentuhan kami, naaalala mo ba nakalagay dito, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Ayan ang nakaada dyan, no? Dito ang nakalagay dito, uh, ganitong word of God, no? We only live once, but if we live right, once is enough, no? So, we memorize the word of God. But I think we did not just memorize it until now it is living in us. You see, the power of the Word of God, even if you just posted it there, it will live in your heart. At siguro nga, nagbunga naman yung pagpo-post ng nanay ko dahil may isang nagpare <laughs> sa mga anak niya. No? So, if my mom is watching, no? you are successful in your uh, endeavor to preach the Word of God at home. But my dear brothers and sisters, I hope 
that this would bring us into a new way of looking at God's Word. Not as letters just written on paper, but whenever we read the Word of God, it becomes alive in us. And God will work in those words that are written in our hearts. My dear brothers and sisters, we have listened to God's Word. Let the Word of God become alive in you today, and it will work on you today. Amen. Please stand. God promises happiness to those who follow His law, who seek Him with all their hearts. Let us pray to Him now in that common bond of fidelity. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Father and the bishops through their teaching and way of life, may encourage the flock to follow Christ's way of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That renewed effort may be intensified so that peace and stability may be attained in the family of nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer that married couples may experience the warmth of God's love in their relationship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and the elderly may be encouraged by the words of comfort and assurances of those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may behold the things that no eyes have seen and no ear has heard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty and everlasting Father, enlighten our lives with your law of love and keep us on the right road which leads to your kingdom. We make our prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to invite once again everyone for our Wednesday evening habit of praying the healing rosary for the world and uh, we thank the community of the parish of our lady of the abandoned in uh, muntinlupa headed by father jonathan cadiz for leading us in our praying of the rosary tonight and we will be praying in front of the image of our lady of the abandoned the patroness and queen of muntinlupa 
And so we invite once again everyone to join us tonight so that we could pray together for the healing of the world. And we would also like to invite you, um, starting tomorrow, the replica image of um, Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage of Antipolo from her shrine in Antipolo will be visiting the Manila Cathedral and the image will be arriving tomorrow at 5 p.m. and it will stay here for a novena of nine days of prayer especially for devotees. And so we invite everyone to visit the Manila Cathedral so that uh, we could pray uh, in front of Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage of Antipolo. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Five hundred years of faith, grateful today. We bear the gift of mission, totally yours. We give ourselves faithfully yours until the end. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes.